now November 2021 and this is going to be another short video clip about my Albert 37 restoration project. Um, today the weather is kind of crappy so I can't really do no fiberglass work. So I decided to start up my engine again and let it run for maybe some 30 minutes or so. What I did in the beginning this year, I actually installed a new engine, which is a Beta Marine 28 based on a three cylinder Kubota engine. Great engine, actually. And this is a replacement for the original engine that was in my boat, which was a Perkins 4107. That about a couple years ago, or three years probably, I completely rebuilt and it ran fine. And but then I noticed once I had my boat on my property, I noticed that um, it started smoking and I couldn't figure out first why. And I had to do some work in the engine department, anyways. So since I have it sitting here anyways, I decided just to pull the motor out, set it on a stand and run it again and then I found out it lost one cylinder compression. So I pulled the head off, checked everything, head was fine, pistons looked fine. But then I pulled the piston out that was low in compression and I found out it had broke piston rings. I guess all the stuff is now made in China and this, the quality control is just not there. So needless to say I was pretty disgusted and I was thinking, oh well, uh, I'm just going to have to replace those rings and put the engine back together. However, I'll get back to this and back at this here after a few minutes. Alright, right now Got the engine running, the Beta Marine 28. I do not have any exhaust, no wet lock exhaust in, in the system. Because right now I'm just running a straight down pitch from my exhaust elbow up onto the um, exhaust port in the back of the boat. Alrighty, I'm going inside the boat now. So this is my new engine. It's dirty right now because I'm sanding and all the dust and crap just settles on it. But anyways, it's basically a brand new motor. So back to my Perkins engine. 
Uh, so, I started to think about rebuilding this Perkins motor again. Because really, actually, rebuilding those Perkins engines is fairly cheap. But um, what I didn't like on the Perkins, even though it was running good, it was very large. And I had a hard time to get anything on the engine compartment, of course, already. Since I was then, I opened up the engine compartment anyways. But that's besides the fact. Um, and I also thought that the Perkins motor was rated with like 37 horsepower. And this one is rated with 28 horsepower, most likely closer to 25. But I think that's enough for the boat anyways. It's a sailboat, it's not like I'm using the single four as like a trawler. <clears throat> so what happens is, as I was looking for spare parts on my Perkins engine, I found an advertisement on Facebook Marketplace, I believe it was. And it says, um, diesel boat engine. I'll put the picture up and I recognize it's a Beta Marine. I always like the, the way Beta Marine engines are set up. They're straightforward, no nonsense. And they're using Kubota engines, which are really, really, really great engines. They're cheap to rebuild, they're straightforward. There's no secret on those engines. They don't make any, they don't hide the part numbers around like Wester Big loves to do. Um, they give you every part number, they give you the option buying from them or buying from Kubota Direct, whatever you need. So anyhow, so the advertisement said that this motor was brand new, freshly rebuilt or whatever. And it came just like that dual alternator setup, which is a great thing if you want to use the engine for, you know, charging your battery banks and what have you. It's always good to have a backup anyways. <clears throat> so the guy wanted very little money. I think he was asking 1700 for it. We settled for, for 1500 So what happened is that engine was rebuilt or refurbished or whatever the scenario was, was been. And he said it has never been started up. So I got to his place. It was about 50 miles from where I live. And I pulled the oil dipstick, brand new oil in. I took the oil oil fill cap off. Everything looked brand new, totally shiny, like like uh, the guy that wasn't lying. So what happens is the engine was either rebuilt or it was a brand new engine. Who knows? So it doesn't really matter. Um, and it was just has been put into a sailboat, which then shortly after they put it in, the boat sunk at the dock. <laughs> Like yeah, that never like is a, as if that never happens, right? The tow hull failed or something. So they pulled the boat back out. The engine didn't kind of go underwater because it was very shallow where it was sitting. It was just the oil pan was a little bit grummy, so it it reached the oil pan of the engine, but no more. There's no no water in the transmission, nothing. And then they decided the the insurance paid them off or something, and they scrapped the boat and pulled the engine back out. So and the person I bought this engine from basically took the engine as payment. And he had no use for it. He had no clue about what, what he can do with it. He was a boater too, but he had a commercial shrimping boat and they use much larger engines anyway. So so I got this engine. I always wanted a Beta Murray engine. So I ended up just selling the Perkins motor as a core. Basically got an, almost as enough money for it to cover the cost for this engine. Of course, I had to fabricate all new motor mounts, brackets, what have you, because it's not really fit. But since I cleared out this engine compartment, there's no problem at all. Now I can actually access this engine everywhere. I have my fuel filter set up right there, dual filter set up, so I can still run the engine as I'm servicing one filter on the, or the other. Doesn't really matter my main electric junction box whatever is related to the engine it's the only thing that goes on there I put the ignition lock right here I don't like it outside because the key gets in the way you get hang up on the key it's out in the weather so what's the point you can open the companion way hatch and just start the engine or stop the engine the same with the fuel gauge is right here I don't have to stay at the fuel gauge every five minutes anyways 
Now the way I got it set up, I have two time delay switches. Those are the ones. One I'm running as a delay timer or stay on timer for actually my glow plugs because you know the glow plugs don't have really any timer controller in there and uh, so I set it to I think 20 seconds or so and then the glow plug light turns off and you start the engine even though the engine starts without the glow plugs anyways unless it's really really cold so the second one is a delay timer for my main engine alternator so what that means the alternator does not get any exciter current up until this engine runs for I think I got it set to a minute or so maybe 30 seconds I'm not quite sure yet so that does two things number one it makes it easy to start the engine because as soon the alternator gets exciter current as a drag on the alternator um, so which whether it's a lot or not it's it's unnecessary so it gives the engine about 30 seconds or a minute so to start running and you know idling itself a little bit warm and then the alternator is going to kick in um, so let me start it this is what basically does this light here the yellow one I'm just going to look in the back it's for my glow plug controller I'm going to turn the key into on position light comes on the yellow light I'm talking about and once it goes off the engine is ready to start and I believe it's at only about 20 seconds or something here it is gonna run it long because I just already got the water shut off just wanted to blow the rest of the water out um, and I don't want to burn up my impeller for my raw water pump so yeah this is basically my main electric panel which for the most part is just really just for the engine because I want to try to keep it separated don't want to mix up too much now those sw switches are for basic functions, nav lights, anchor lights and what have you, so I can just reach in from the cockpit and just um, turn whatever I have to turn on, bilge pump of course and so on and so forth. Anyhow, so this is that, Jesus, I'm trying to hold this camera still as I'm going through it, the exhaust system. I put a flex joint in the exhaust system right here just like they use on modern cars so it helps with the harmonic and the vibration of the engine so and also takes a little bit of weight off the mixing elbow pipe which are hung up suspended on a basically what it is is a rubber muffler hanger so it can swing actually oh, let me see if I can get this camera up there so there is there is movement this is my exhaust hose it goes in a, from the mixing elbow in a straight down pitch it, so even if I were to forget to turn the water off it will not backflow in the engine it's just gonna go right straight out of the exhaust so it's the same thing when you shut the engine off there's no residual water like as if you would have a you know water lock muffler and stuff like that they always contain some water it depends on how the boat is moving it could back flush into the engine and I didn't want that so let's see <clears throat> okay I guess that's it for now um, everything else so it looks like crap in here at the moment I'm working more outside on my deck repair cutting all the rotted balsa core out replacing it with marine grade plywood resealing it back up anyways today's a crappy day 
So I just thought I'm gonna do this quick video clip about my engine. Alrighty, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.